What do an ear surgeon and a behavioral researcher have in common? For Matt Bush and Tina Stutes at the University of Kentucky, it's three things. A focus on children, a shared experience in the KL2 program, and a new research project. The types of behaviors that I'm primarily interested in are grouped together as disruptive behavior problems. So these are things like kids being aggressive beyond the typical range of aggression you see in children, being non-compliant and oppositional to adults and others in authority positions, having a lot of conflict with peers and peer rejection. When I finished my MSW degree, I was working in Powell County first, and the need was really great there. It was clear that the earlier you can identify kids and the earlier you can intervene, even in a preventive way, you can offset all of these really devastating long-term effects. So three out of a thousand children are born with some degree of permanent hearing loss. The impacts of hearing loss in children are immense and they're lifelong because what you hear is what you say. It's sort of a race against the clock to be able to identify the hearing loss if it's there and to treat it appropriately to be able to help a child uh, develop oral communication. I saw an announcement from our Center for Clinical and Translational Science that they were accepting applications for their KL2 program. This was a career development opportunity for junior faculty at UK, funded by our CTSA award at UK, which is amazing and wonderful and full of resources for the whole campus. You propose a research plan and a training plan, mentors, and kind of think about what the trajectory of your research is going to be over the next five to ten years and what opportunities in the next two to three years you could access that would really maximize your chances to develop as an independent investigator. Clinicians sometimes fall back on their default mode which is to take good care of patients and to see patients on a daily basis and even though they may be bright and, and have promise in the research realm if they're not really connected with the right people, the right mentors, and the right opportunities, then their research potential somewhat fizzles out. I got to go to NIH-sponsored national trainings, to national conferences. I took courses here on campus through the CCTS. I went to workshops at other institutions. And for me, I've actually said this before, and it really is true, it was just professionally life-changing. That was a, an, an unexpected perk of the KL2 program. As we sit together in conferences and different classes and review each other's proposals and express our frustrations, our fears, our concerns, the challenges in obtaining funding. So it's through our constant discussion of our research ideas and, and honing and redirecting that we find sort of a, a like-minded kindred spirit and, and people who can really support the work over two years in the KL2 program together. And we kept saying, there has to be something we could do together. Matt actually saw an article in his field that was talking about potential behavioral disparities among children with hearing loss versus children without hearing loss. And so that topic, immediately we both thought, that's something that we could work on together. This is something that those of us that are in practice that care for children with hearing loss know that inherent difficulties in communication can cause problems with behavior and many parents of children with behavioral problems have known this to be a challenge and that can actually interfere with timely and effective intervention strategies. One of the things we thought we could do is conduct a study where we would con compare the levels of behavioral problems that were observed between three groups. So there are children with no hearing loss, children with hearing loss who have cochlear implants, and children with hearing loss who have hearing aids. So our second phase of the pilot is to pilot test a specific behavioral parent training program. So the family checkup was developed to be a really tailored approach. The idea is that parents will meet with the interventionist or the person delivering this intervention probably between one and three times. And in the actual family checkup intervention, this is envisioned as an annual, sort of like a well child check. So one of the things that Matt and I talked about was that kids with hearing loss, they come in frequently. They have to have their hearing aids adjustment, they come in for cochlear implant stuff, so 
it's an audience that is gonna be coming in. And if you can capture them somewhere where they're already coming in, you've also lowered stigma associated with any kind of treatment for behavioral issues. Um, they're coming to some place that they're already comfortable. And so we're interested in implementation. We're gonna be pilot testing a lot of measures and then hopefully taking all this information and developing a larger grant application to do a wide scale test. Within a medical center that is so well equipped and experienced in healthcare disparities research, it is really just a stepping stone to be able then to ad advance and translate our research into rural populations, specifically within the Appalachian area, to further investigate the problem and perhaps launch in a culturally appropriate way of addressing behavioral problems in children. I may not be able to tell you that a higher number of three to five year olds are having behavioral problems in Appalachia compared to the rest of the country. But I do know that drug use, involvement in juvenile justice, school dropout, and a whole host of other negative outcomes that are associated with that, those are definitely elevated. The onus is on us as a department and as an institution, as the State University of Kentucky, to provide better ways to access care, to further define where the problems lie, and to come to their aid, to seek funding opportunities, but, but ultimately to get down to where patients are and to try to provide care as timely as possible. Mm -hmm.